Oh na na na, na 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 na, eh eh, na na na. Friends, get up. Friends, stand up. Friends, get up. Brush off yourself and come. Friends, get up. Friends, stand up. Friends. Get up, clean up your heart and come back out for troubles in your bags. Lace up your shoes, pull up your socks. Ease your trouble off your mind, yeah. Mountains to climb, rivers to cross, but yet we got to pass. Got to talk to the boss. I'm Oshioni Ekpe. I'm the founder of FMI Children's Trust. We go into schools and we deliver African workshops to teach children different things on culture and tradition. Our Let's Represent project is looking at the Africans in Wakefield and their relevance to Wakefield. Um, within that project, we will be doing oral histories on Africans who are currently in Wakefield and what it was like for them coming into the city and settling into the city, how they managed to mix their own cultures with British culture. Frederick Douglass plays a significant role within Wakefield because he came to Wakefield in 1860 and delivered a very iconic speech here. He was a great orator in the United States and he is very well known in the United States but not that well known over here in the UK. Our aim as a trust to try and get Frederick Douglass out, get him into the schools, make teachers aware of him so they can teach about Frederick Douglass as well as teaching about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. When it comes to black history, they can teach Frederick Douglass and also make it relevant to Wakefield. So our main focus was Wakefield schools and why the children can feel a connection to Frederick Douglass because obviously Wakefield's their home. From the workshops that we've been delivering so far on Frederick Douglass, we've not only been doing a history class, um, a culture class and a dance class, we've also been teaching leadership skills, creativity, you know, schools tend to be very more academic at the moment, so we wanted to push the skills based in there and also push the heritage in there and also push the African heritage as well and also make it relevant to Wakefield. Somebody who starts life as with odds against him um, and who achieves, particularly if you start life as a slave and you become an advisor to four American presidents. That's very unusual. It takes a certain determined spirit. Everybody has that sense of determined spirit. Everybody is a small Frederick Douglass in their own way. personal oppression you feel in your life, you have to have hope and you have to have determination to feel that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that that is Frederick Douglass's legacy, that no matter how terrible your situation, there is hope. I, Frederick Douglass, was born in the southern states of America where the color of my skin demands by law that I must be a slave for the rest of my life. He believed in universal freedom for everyone, not just for Africans. So I think he, he engenders a sense of determination, which I think everybody needs, a sense of determination to achieve whatever it is that you see, whether some form of excellence. significance to Britain is that, um, including the people of Wakefield, is that they supported Frederick Douglass in his efforts not only to be free from slavery, 
but also his determination to free other people from slavery too. So he wanted to start a newspaper. So the people of Britain and the people of Wakefield supported him in that effort. And that newspaper contributed very strongly to people's opinions, which then led to the end of slavery in America. Frederick Douglass spoke at the Corn Exchange in Wakefield and he wanted to stir people's feelings. He made such an impression on the people of Britain that they paid for his freedom from slavery. So therefore he could return to America a free man. He didn't have to look over his shoulders and he could get on with the serious work of campaigning to the American government to liberate slaves in America. And one of the main tools with which he did this was through his newspaper, The North Star. Frederick Douglass was a great maker of speeches and uh, he achieved great fame across America. Um, he was able to pinpoint his political values and, and capture the imagination of the American people and to, to get behind him in what he was saying. And so, therefore, he, you know, when decisions had to be made, the president called upon Frederick Douglass as an advisor. People thought that slaves couldn't achieve anything, that their lives weren't worthwhile, that they had no intelligence. Frederick Douglass really, really contradicts that. So no matter what other people think about you, it's what you think about yourself that's more important. For youngsters, I think it's a sense of hope and encouragement um, and to believe in yourself. That no matter how bad things are, there is room for improvement. Things can get better because you can't get much worse than the situation that Frederick Douglass was in with the punishments on the plantation and the hard labor that he had to go through but he had that hope in his head that no matter how bad things are, he was going to make them better. The flame of hope. hope. I, would, I would say, call it a flame of hope. Everybody should keep the flame of hope from when you're a child to growing up. There were two aims to the um, Frederick Douglass workshop. One of the aims were to, to give a creative workshop based on stimuli and to use Frederick Douglass's life as a stimuli of the workshop to actually help people to understand his life. I would start the workshop from the whole idea of somebody being solitary or lonely. That comes from Frederick Douglass's life from the point of view of when he's age of seven, he's taken to the plantation. Because you can enact an emotion or dance an emotion, you can also engage more closely with the text. In other words, they don't necessarily have to read the text, but the stimuli that I start to give them from the text will help them start to feel and engage with the text. That is a good way of actually encouraging people to come across something that might seem far removed from them to become immediate. So you always get the dance, which is what people want, but equally on top of that, you can get Frederick Douglass. I think he was a brave man, you know, to like to get to where he was from slavery. I think we understand now how he felt, how bad it actually was, because at first I knew that slavery was dramatic and evidently it was brutal, but I think that the, through dancing it, which is something that I'm passionate about, I think it made me more uh, like emotional towards him and made me understand him a bit more. 
Well, for us, you know, as a school, um, uh, it really sort of uh, it hits a spot in terms of um, it's got social context, historical context, you know, and uh, it gives us an opportunity really to do sort of cross-curricular links. I'll, re I'll, I'll definitely remember it. I'll t definitely take it into all my performances now. Yeah. I swear it does. It helps. It helps in performing arts, and it helps like in English as well because you can you can write about how you feel and you can write from his perspectives too. I'm taking performing arts next year in GCSE and it's well both of us are. And we didn't we didn't really know what we were gonna expect today. We thought we were just gonna be like dancing. We didn't expect it to be like how it is now because it's kinda emotionally. Yeah it's a good way of learning because you get emotional and then you get to use it from when in the future so when you need it. It's better than just being stuck in a classroom like getting it from textbooks and like having to take it off the computer and like the teacher explaining it to you can like show it through dance and like drama and like performing it's to front of people it builds confidence up as well. This was a new name to them Frederick Douglass was nothing they've come across before and what's absolutely brilliant particularly for the group that we've got this afternoon their current topic is slavery yeah. and already the history teachers are saying to me um, that they can tell the difference you know between those kids who have participated in the workshop. We only like knew about Martin Luther King and what he did but it's good to find out there are other people as well not just like the one or two people who like made changes in the world. It was just a really good opportunity and a really good workshop to sort of understand everything about slavery, how it worked. Learning about slavery through movement has just been fantastic for the kids. If you put your own emotion into it and you sort of explore it yourself rather than reading it from a textbook and trying to understand it, you're sort of making yourself understand it by doing the physical aspect. It's also fair as well, like it's one of their normal lessons and you actually do active stuff and realise like your emotions and stuff and how to express it on your face. It's more interesting rather than just sitting there and someone just talking to you. If someone tells you what you're doing and then you put it in yourself and create the whole experience yourself, I think it's more interesting. I believe that I can make a big difference. I also believe that you Yes, you, as little as you think you may be, you can make a big difference too.